G'day trainers and welcome back. We've got Pokemon Horizons episode 5 review today and this was another absolute banger. It's just been it's been hit after hit. I know we're only five episodes in, but I don't think I've seen a five episode run of Pokemon, like for a beginning series, that's just been banger after banger. I, I don't think so. The fur, no, maybe if I, if I take my, if I put my nostalgia goggles on the first five episodes of like the Indigo League were great. Uh, but look, no, these have just been really, really good. So episode five is titled, I found you Hogator, obviously. Hogato being the Japanese name for Fue Coco, and much, much cooler. It might actually be Hogator, because it's obviously like an alligator. So it's maybe, and I think even in Japanese, it probably sounds closer to Hogator, but Hogator, Hogator. We're going to go Hogator. Um, we start off, uh, in the last episode, obviously, we had Freed take Liko and Sprigatito back to the Brave Asagi. They, they were done. Their journey was over for that day. Roy had different plans. He has tracked him down in the middle of the night and he sneaks onto the brave Asagi thinking he's pretty clever, thinking he's, uh, thinking he's clever until it turns out Captain Pikachu is on watch tonight and he does not appreciate people climbing onto his ship and he thunderbolts the heck out of Roy, waking up the entire crew. Uh, what we do see, what we do see though, is as Roy's climbing, there's something shining in his backpack. It, it's, it's very clearly the ancient Pokeball, but we also cut over to Liko and Sprigatito sleeping. So this is just before Captain Pikachu wrecks Roy uh, and her pendant. She's obviously still wearing her pendant uh, and it's glowing under her shirt as well. So there's definitely a connection. We know that. I think we figured out last episode, we saw them both glowing at the same time. Again, my initial assumption, I haven't put too much thought into it, but my initial assumption is that uh, whatever that pendant Pokemon is, the one that looks like Terrapagos, it's going to need to be caught by this Pokeball. Maybe, maybe it, I, I don't know. That I think that's just a very basic, very basic one. And I think that's just how it could go. Um, what does happen though, is once they're all confronted and I mean, when he's confronted, I mean, Aliko and Sprigatito are there, Freed's there, Molly's there, Murdoch's there. Best girl, Orla, is there, and they want to know what the heck he's doing breaking onto their ship in the middle of the night. Because think about it, it's not just a ship. This is where the Rising Vault Tacklers live. This is their home. They've essentially just had a kid break into their home in the hopes of seeing a wild Pokemon. I'd be a little upset. When asked why, uh, Roy's like, look, I just needed to see that face again. And Liko, in like I said, man, she's an anime character now. She goes into her heading and she's like, huh? is he talking about me? Is it my face he wants to see again? How do I respond to this? But no, I, I don't think anyone's surprised. He just wanted to see Hogatula's face again. He wanted to see little Fue Coco's face. Uh, and look, it was a, it was a look of relief. It wasn't let, she wasn't let down that she wasn't taught that Roy wasn't referring to her. She was she was relieved. She one hundred percent was relieved. He makes he makes his wishes known to the crew. So he does let the, he, especially Freed, he lets Freed know that he wants to be Hogator's trainer. Um, and I, I do keep meaning to say Fui Coco, but Hogator just sounds so much cooler. I don't like Fui Coco's name. It, it's a weird one, but hey, I'm not in charge of naming them. Uh, and he says, look, I, I want to be Fui Coco's trainer. Liko loves that idea, but Freed's like, hold up. This isn't just about what you want. There's more than one thing going on here. There's your thoughts, but there's Fue Coco's thoughts as well. Does Fue Coco want you as a trainer? Because if it doesn't, you two are not going to be in sync. Now that thought pretty much throws the last 25 years of Pokemon into question. Yes, after being caught, Pokemon and their trainers can form connections, but a lot of these Pokemon are caught unwillingly. Like they are beaten to within an inch of their life and then captured and forced into slavery and subservery. Subs subserver is that a is that a word? I'm gonna keep it. Subservery. Pretty sure it's not. Um, but they become subservient. Maybe it's a word. Maybe. Um, does that mean all of these previous Pokemon have not shown their true potential? Maybe. Probably not. Uh, I think it's just a line that, that's come in. Um, because obviously Freed's very connected with Pokemon, or should I say Professor Freed is very connected with Pokemon's emotions and what, and what they want. And that's good. I think, I think that's what we need. We need more characters like that. He does say to Roy, he's like, look, 
you can speak to Fue Coco, but just just wait. Stay here the night. It's the middle of the night. Don't go wandering through the forest. You can sleep here. And was like, excellent. I'm going to go find Fue Coco. And he wants to see him tonight, but he can't. They're searching all over the ship. Liko's helping him. They're just not finding him anywhere. He's asleep in a box. He climbed into like a box of food. It's probably like a big bag of flour. I'm not sure what it was. Um, and he's just sleeping. He's the cutest sleeper in the world. Fue Coco was a great sleeper. Um, yeah. Essentially, though, they, they don't find him. Liko and Roy end up back up on the wing deck. And it sort of explains that the, the Pokemon's emotions, or both feelings, do need to be in tune. She explains the sort of difficulties that her and Sprigatito had when they first partnered up. And if you guys remember, if you're watching it or if you're just watching my reviews, they weren't great partners. Sprigatito didn't want to listen, and I don't blame it. Who wants to listen to some 10-year-old kid who's never trained a Pokemon in their life? Um, what do they know? So it really comes back to, you know, Pokemon and trainer need to be in sync. And it seems like that could become a recurring theme through this entire new series, uh, which I like. I like that idea. Um, for those that are aware, we, we run, and it has been a little while because my fellow members don't want to hurry up and get into it. Uh, but we run a Pokemon D&D campaign and pretty much all of the Pokemon that my character, Jet Blackthorn, has, yeah, I don't know, a bit of an edgy name, but there's a reason. Uh, the main reason that uh, he has got all of these Pokemon so far is he's just, he's talked to them, he's convinced them to join him. Uh, and I'm hoping that that just means we're going to have a bit of a stronger bond. Um, but I guess we'll have to see if we ever get to continue playing. That uh, that series is in one of the playlists. Go check it out. Um it's only five episodes so far, but it's it's fun. It's fun. Um, look, they're looking for him again. They can't find him. They go to sleep. They wake up. It's very it's a seamless transition. And they start looking through the ship again. They don't. They find a Noctowl that scares the hell out of Roy. He doesn't seem to be a Noctowl fan. But to be fair, Noctowl like ro raised its wings and scared him a little bit. Um, they still can't find him. They cannot find him at all. So Roy starts singing. The same song that Fue Coco was singing in the last episode, trying to find them. It's just not working. Fue Coco does not want to wake up, and I don't know why. But to be honest, I don't blame him. If I could get those sort of sleep-ins, I would. And I think anybody my age, uh, especially my age with kids, would agree. Because we just don't get enough sleep. Ever. <laughs> just ever. Um, so the next morning, we see pretty much everyone in the Rising Vault Tacklers are well-rested except for the best crew member and my number two most simped for character right after Yamato from One Piece, Orla. She didn't have a very good night. The the damages to the, the gas bag, the, I guess, what's the word? I couldn't think of the right word to call it last episode either, uh, but the gas bag is what they call it. What holds the helium or whatever gases they're using to keep the Brave Asagi in the air. She was trying to patch it all night. Every time she'd patch one, another hole would open, and it was just a patch, rip open, patch, rip open, patch, rip open. It was horrible, and she looks terrible. If it wasn't for her having a giant Metagross to just carry her around and support her weight, I, I think she would have just passed out, because she looks bad. Like, she looks really, really bad. Um, Roy's like, hold on, my grandpa might be able to help. We could get some, uh, we can get some materials, maybe uh, some Pokemon from the forest, the wild Pokemon, maybe they can help, but my grandpa definitely could. Let's go, let's go have a look. Right after he mentions it though, we cut to a Neato Thing segment, and I hope, I really hope we keep getting Neato Thing segments, because I love them. Unless it turns out it's a Yono, oh my god, could it be a Yono? No, no, she's an electric type, she wouldn't be dressing up like a Nidorina. Um, okay. God, I hope not. Uh, <laughs> Neato Thing jumps in with another segment on just Pokemon and Pokeballs, how to catch them. And we see something, and I think we've seen inside Pokeballs before. We've seen inside like a regular Pokeball, but I think it was meant to be a skit, but it was just the Pokemon sitting there in the Pokeball. If that's the way it is, which I now think it might be, that's horrible. I never want to use a regular Pokeball again because they show us what's inside. It's called a gorgeous Pokeball in the sub, but we all know it as the luxury Pokeball. They show us what is inside there, and I'll have an image up. It'll probably take over the screen right now. This is kind of the only Pokeball I want to use forever. If our Pokemon stay conscious and, like, active within their Pokeballs, we, we should be doing the Luxury Ball. Like, have a look at this. I feel terrible, terrible if all my Pokemon are just sitting in a regular Pokeball. 
it makes me think, what do all the others look like? I'm going to have a little look into it. Maybe I can find some artwork of what they look like. Maybe inside like the, the lure ball or the dive, the dive ball is just all underwater. The, oh my God. Could you imagine like catching, I don't know, a Doug trio in a dive ball, if that's what it was. Oh my God. That's pokey murder. Okay. Um, maybe the, the lure ball, maybe it's just a, it's a, a, a beach with a jetty or a wharf. Cause you know, that's what you fish off. Um, that'd be really, really cool. If that's the way Pokeballs are on the inside, we need, as a community, we need to know about that. That's amazing. Um, but it was really cool. Um, look, while preparing to leave, Freed decides to leave Captain Pikachu and Charizard behind to guard the Brave Asagi. Um, and look, I think that's a good choice. He knows the explorers are still out there. He knows they're going to be hunting him down. Better leave some guards, especially with Aula so run down. She seems to have the next most powerful Pokemon uh, with her, maybe not Slugma, but with her Metagross. Um, but she looks pretty beat down. So leaving Charizard or Lizardon and Captain Pikachu is probably the right choice. We do see Roy's grandpa is the old village elder that Freed was talking to in the last episode. Uh, so he's a bit shocked. Not as shocked as Roy, though, because he's about to get his butt kicked by his grandpa. Uh, he is not impressed that he broke on to, broke broke into somebody's airship or snuck onto somebody's airship without permission. Uh, thankfully, good guy Freed, though, calms him down. He's like, look, he's just a kid being a kid. He wanted to see his friend again. Um, so, look, Freed's a good guy. I'm liking Freed. I... Look, let's give it let's give it another 10 episodes. I might simp for Freed, who knows. I know a few I know a few of you are simping for Freed and I do not blame you in the slightest. Um after those little introductions, we do see Fue Coco wake up though. He wakes up and walks out of the room he was sleeping in, the where the crate was, and he sees that there are some orange berries left out. Um uh, Molly, Molly walks by and is like, "Oh yeah. Roy left those out for you." And Fue Coco's like, "Nani?" He didn't say Nani. Uh, Roy was here and he bails. He starts looking. He scouts the ship for Roy uh, to the point where he jumps off the Brave Asagi. It's in the area, not high on the off the air. It's like that far off the ground. And they're just trying to move it somewhere more safe to do the repairs. But he leaps off a moving airship. That's how badly he wants to see our second protagonist, Roy. Um, and he starts going. He starts searching for... Uh, through the forest, he goes to the, uh, uh, the, the, the cabin, like the, the hideout, his secret base that he trashed in the last episode. He goes along the beach. He gets sad, though, because one of those orange berries he was eating, he trips in the mud, gets his face all dirty, and drops it in the ocean. I thought he was going to cry. And if he had cried, I probably would have cried, because it was really, really sad. Um, <laughs> it's kind of good, though. We see that the explorers have landed. And Zio, the guy with the ride on, he comes flying in on his Skarmory and reports back to Amethio and Konia, who are already on the land. They're no longer in the submarine. And he's like, I found the airship. Let's go attack it. Uh, and Konia backs up. He's like, let's do it. Let's take that airship while they're not around. Uh, Zio's like, yep, freed. He freed and the girl, being Liko. They're not on the airship, though. And that's when Kony is like, let's attack it. So I apologize, Zia didn't say attack it. Konia did, the girl. And Amethio shut that down so fast. Uh, however, I do think that might be a translation error or a subtitle error of where I've watched this uh, because they do end up going towards the airship. Um, Amethio's like, no, we only need the girl and the pendant. Let's go seek them out. But two minutes later, they're, they're near the ship, so... Not 100% sure what happened there. Uh, it definitely seems like it to be a bit of a translation error. Or maybe we just saw it off screen or we it happened off screen and they decided to go take out the ship. Anyway, now uh, we cut back to Roy, Freed, the village elder being Grandpa and Liko and Sprigatito. Uh, and they're sitting down. They're about to have some snacks. Grandpa has calmed down and they're about to eat something that look a lot like Caterpie and Weedle. Now, if you watch a lot of anime, you know what they are. They're those little, like, little balls. <laughs> You'll usually see, like, three of them on a stick. Um, you know what they are. You know what they are. Um, don't freak out. I thought what they were going to say is they have deep fried some Caterpie and Weedle. Thankfully, though, this is still the Kanto region. They are not in Poldea, where they openly eat cloth sticks and... Oh, 
I'm not judging. I'm not judging, man. It's a different culture. Eat Pokemon as much as you want, but it's just not the way it's done in the Kanto region. Um, but no, what got their attention was they're like, hold on, these do like look like Caterpie and Weedle. Do you remember all the string shots they were using yesterday? Do you remember how tough they were? Maybe we can use those string shots to repair the gas bag of the Brave Asagi. And Freed's like, you know what? Yes. That is going to work. That is 100% going to work. Um, we cut in to see that the rest of the... Vi oh, sorry, we don't cut in. We see that the rest of the village uh, decide to pop over. Apparently, they do village lunches every day, or at least on this day, because they're all showing up. There's a bunch of wild Pokemon. Remember, there are no Pokemon trainers on this island in Kanto, and they're all just wild Pokemon working together, living together, um... And what I did notice was strange was there was a Caterpie. Oh, not sorry, not strange, but and there wasn't a Caterpie. There was a, a Krabby and a Mankey. And I'd never realized what their Japanese names were. The Japanese name for Krabby is, and, and bear with me, because it's a bit of an intricate, difficult one to say. Uh, but but Japanese Krabby's name is Crab. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's Krabby's name. It's just Crab. And you know what? Fine. It describes that English isn't much different. It's just Krabby. It's only, it's, it's a different starting letter and an extra B and a Y. It's, okay. It's a little different, but it sounds similar. And Mankey is just Mankey. I actually went and looked it up because I'm like, maybe Mankey is just going to be Monkey. But no, Mankey was Mankey. Uh, so they have the same Japanese and English names. It's nothing integral or important to the story. I just found it interesting. I liked it. We cut back to Fue Coco, and as the explorers are heading off, so Amethio is off on his Corviknight, and Konia and Zia are both on their Skarmory, and they've taken off. Fue Coco's like, holy crap, something bad's about to happen. I've got to go find Freed. I'm, I'm assuming he's looking for Freed. Maybe Roy, but Freed. And he starts running. Thankfully, it doesn't take him too long, though, because he comes across the village and while he doesn't say it perfectly because he's, he's a Pokemon and he can only say Hokuto, um, he gets the impression off that something bad is happening in this direction. And they're like, hold on, the Brave Asagi and the rest of the Rising Vault Tacklers are over here. Maybe something bad's about to happen. So Freed's like, Liko, Roy, you stay here. I'm going to go. Now we do see, my prediction was right, what was thrown on the Brave Asagi, it was just a location tracker because we see the explorers tracking him on a Rotom tablet. Uh, and that's how they were able to find the location of the Asagi, or the Brave Asagi, the airship. Um, look, I'm, I'm not going to say that that was the best prediction of 2023, because I think most people realized it was a it was a locating tracking device, but yeah, I'm going to take a small win where I can get it. Back on the Brave Asagi, we see the remaining Rising Vault Tacklers are having lunch. They've just started, Murdoch, well, sorry, sorry, Murdoch has just finished making lunch and just got it off to everyone. When they do see in the distance, the explorers are there. Amethio, Zia, and Konia, they are coming. And let's just say it's a good thing that Freed left Charizard and Captain Pikachu around. Um, now, they are going to start a battle. They land and they that it's going down. It is 100% going down. You've got Zia and Konia. They land on the ground. Murdoch and Morla. Orla, no, Orla, Orla, I'm sorry, Orla, Murdoch and Orla both come out and like, we gonna be your battle partners, and that's what happens, so, uh, Zia throws out his Rhydon, Konia throws out, first new Pokemon we've seen from her, she's got a Golduck, uh, Orla throws out her Metagross, and Murdoch for some reason thinks his Rockruff is going to be able to do anything, but he throws him out as well, now, that means that we now know some more of the, uh, Bra uh, not the Brave Sagi, sorry, we know some more of the Explorers Pokemon. Amethia has obviously got his Corviknight and his Cerule Edge. Murdoch has got his Rhydon and his Skarmory. And we've now seen Konia, she has a Skarmory and a Golduck. Uh, not surprising, but at the same time, kind of surprising, because we don't have no weak antagonists now this isn't like jesse and james getting defeated in every battle super easily because konia and zir absolutely demolish murdoch and orla to my dismay i like them but i didn't want to see him get beat down like that um but it happened they got beat down real real bad as they are getting beaten down though we see 
uh, Amethio is still in the air. He's just watching the battle on the back of his Corviknight until out of nowhere, bloop, I don't know why, the, why that sound happened. Uh, Charizard drops down, Freed's already on his back, Captain Pikachu's on his head, and he's like, we're here now. I love Freed. I'm loving Freed so much. Uh, and Mithy was like, I've got no issue with you guys. I've got no business with the rising vault tacklers. I just want the girl and the pendant. And Freed's like, ain't gonna happen, man. No. <laughs> Did you actually expect me to say yes? It's just not gonna happen, man. Leave the girl alone. Um, and he's like, pity. Looks like we need to battle. He lands. And you're thinking, is this gonna be like battle between Cerulege and Charizard number 64? No, it's not. Corviknight first Charizard begins. The two flying types are going to be going at each other. So that battle begins. Now, like I mentioned, Orla and Murdoch are getting beat down pretty bad. Konia realizes that they don't need both of them to continue to knock her down. She goes, hmm, hold on. If Freed came in from that direction, as in from behind us, that's probably where the girl and the pendant are also. So she leaves. Well, we don't see her leave. We know she does later, but she just notes that that must be where they are. We then cut to the forest. Roy and Liko are there. They're talking to the Scytha that's in there, as well as the Weedle and the Caterpie, trying to say, please, come and help us. At first, I was thinking they were going to have the Weedle and the Caterpie try to fix the gas bags, or the Scytha jump into the battle, but no, they want them all just to come and help repair the Brave Asagi. Eventually, they say yes. Scyther's like, you know what, man? I've got you. It's exactly what Scyther said, but he implies. He's like, yes, we're going to come and help. As they are going to leave, though, Konia shows up. She blocks their path. She's like, you ain't going anywhere. And then she spots little Nyauha or Sprigatito, and she's just completely flustered. Uh, and at the same time, devastated, because Sprigatito gets all catty. He's like, Meow. <laughs> you <laughs> get away from me. And she's like, oh, we're never going to be able to go back to the way we were, are we? And Sprigatito's like, no. <laughs> Apparently Pokemon are talking a lot in this episode. Um, <laughs> and they're like, fine. Then I guess I'm going to have to treat you as my foe. Liko steps in and is like, Roy, get out of here. I'll handle this piece of trash. She doesn't call her a piece of trash. But I'm liking Liko, man. She, she's got some cojones on it. Mm, that doesn't feel right. She's not weak. She's not a weak protagonist. She, she's willing to fight for what she's got or what she wants or what she wants to protect. And I am digging it. Um, but we cut away. <laughs> we don't get to see what else is happening. We cut back and the battle is not going well. Rockruff has been beat down. Metagross has been beat down. What we do see though is Molly the, the pink haired girl with the, the chancy sports jacket. She runs down and she's like, tag, I'm in. She's running down. At the same time, Roy, the Caterpie, the Weedle and the Scythe all arrive. And Murdoch and all are like, all right, you know what? We've already been beat down, but we've got another role here. We need to get the Brave Asagi fixed. So they swap spots. Orla and Murdoch, they go back onto the ship with the Weedle, the Caterpie and the Scyther. And uh, Molly comes down with her chancy and begins the battle. Battle. <laughs> she doesn't have much of a battle. She gets beat down in like one hit. She tries to use pound on the ride on. Because, you know, using pound on a, a ground and rock type Pokemon is, you know, going to work well. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Uh, and she gets beat down real quick. Um, but we do cut inside, and we see it just happen really, really quickly. Um, it's not a drawn-out scene. The Caterpie and the Weedle are throwing off all of those string shots. Uh, the Scythe cut them off, and immediately... It, it seems a little dangerous, actually. It means that maybe they've just had air or gas continuously pushing into the Brave Asagi, because the second it's patched up, it lifts up off the ground. We cut back. Again, there's a lot of cuts. There's a lot of cuts in this because there's just a lot of main characters. It's not like we're just following Ash anymore. We've got a pretty diverse group that we do need to cover. Now, we see Roy and Fuikoko. They watched Molly get beat down. 
they are watching Charizard try to fight against Corbin. And I, I, when I say try, I don't mean he's losing. We see Charizard fighting against that and he's getting inspired. We see that big sparkly eye anime trope that happens a lot. And Roy's like, oh, I get it. You admire Lizard on Charizard, don't you? He's like, Hogator. <laughs> um, and like, you know what then? How about we battle? We're going to get in. So Roy tells Molly, get back on the ship, get back. We'll take it from here. And he tells, uh, he tells Foy Coco to launch the biggest ember of his life. And well, nothing. It's like, and it goes, and it was embarrassing. Roy's embarrassed. Foy Coco's embarrassed. Freed's like, oh my God, will you two just get out of here? Um, luckily though, at that point, Liko arrives. And remember earlier on in the episode, uh, she was telling him, look, Remember, Sprigatito and I, we weren't greatly in sync. We didn't know each other's feelings back then, and it stopped this from happening. Remember, she was trying to launch Leafage, and it wouldn't work back in episode one, uh, and maybe even in episode two, mostly in episode one. No, it'd be in episode one. Uh, and he's like, look, tell, tell Fuey Coco how you feel. You guys need to be on the same page. You need to be in sync. And I love Roy because he's interpreted this as he is going to sing to Fue Coco, and he does it. He starts singing. It's closer to chanting, but he starts singing to Fue Coco. And at first, I'm like, oh, this is a little cringy. But it got cool. If it wasn't going to copyright and block this uh, this review worldwide, um, because that happened very recently with one of the streams, um, he starts chanting, and it gets really cool. Uh, it one Honestly, what it reminded me of is it reminded me of, especially in this side of the world, like the Australia side of the world, you'll understand, um, one of the rugby teams is called the All Blacks, and they're the New Zealand team. And they've got a tradition that they do before every single game, and it's called the Hucker. I'm not going to try to do it, first of all, because I don't know if that'd be offensive. Maybe it would be. Secondly, I wouldn't be able to do it really well. Thirdly, I don't know the language. Um, but it's like, a, it's uh, at least the way I perceive it is it's like a real intimidation tactic. Um, and it is, if you've ever seen the rugby team doing that, and if you, you were face to face with it, I'd be intimidated. Um, but that's what this felt like. Like Foy Coco is getting into it. Foy Coco starts to, uh, chant the exact same thing to himself. Uh, and then some like, I want to say some ro lighter rock music starts playing in the background. I was getting into it. I was getting some goosebumps. I, I saw myself watching. I could feel myself and I'm like, yeah, mm, come on, come on Foy Coco. You got this buddy. I was getting into it. Um, and it worked. He's like, Roy's like, Fue Coco, you need to launch another Ember now. And it was a big one. And it takes a hut right on one hit. It was amazing. It was so good. If you were watching, for some reason, if you're watching this review before you're watching the episode, go and watch it because it was so cool. Unfortunately, unfortunately, in the excitement, Freed had taken his eyes off Amethio of and was watching what had just happened. And Amethio is gone. But where is he gone? He's back on Corviknight and they are barreling towards Liko. I forgot it. I was going to say Orla. There's a lot of names. He's barreling towards uh, Liko and Sprigatito and he's going to grab her. And then, well, to be continued. That's where the episode ended. Guys, this was an insane episode. I really want to know what's going on with the ancient Pokeball, this pendant, the Terrapagos looking Pokemon. I want to know about Freed's backstory. Is he, a, is he like a dropped out professor? Um, I just want to know more and more. It is so cool. Guys, again, I cannot stress enough. This is the best Pokemon series we've had. And I'm, I'm a Gen 1 boy. I was, I've been around since when it came out in what, 96 with the games, what, 98, the anime. I've been around since then watching it from day one. And this is the best it has been. I get pumped up. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see the the English VAs. Um, I still think the Japanese is going to be better. I'm still going to be watching the Japanese, but the English is really good. Maybe I should find out if they've already got people for the English VAs. Maybe I, maybe I can audition. Could I be freed? Or Murdoch? Or Roy? 
or I'm going to look into it. Um, guys, that's going to be the episode. Thank you for sticking in for the review. I'm loving these reviews. I hope you are too. Again, let me know down below what your favorite part of the episode is. Let me know if you've got any theories about the ancient Pokeball and the, the pendant and the Terrapagos looking Pokemon. I want to know them. I want to hear what you guys are. I want to see what you guys are thinking. Um, and we can just chat about it. Guys, apart from that, have a fantastic day. I love you all. And goodbye.